Hey everyone, my name is Donald and in this video we're going to be showing you how to change how your contact form 7 form works using ultimate add-ons for Elementor. So we previously discussed gravity forms. Let's go ahead and discuss contact form 7. So as you can see we have a simple contact form here and we have our name, email, subject, message and we have borders around them. We also have a centered styled button and we have those options. We also have this one over here where we have the column that has the background in it and then we have the contact form over top of it. And it's more simplistic and minimal where it only has a border on the bottom and then we have a rounded button here. We also have something here where we can go ahead and do inline lists and uh, we can go ahead and make these look exactly how we need it. So let's go ahead and dive in. From here, we're going to go ahead and search for Contact Form 7. We're going to click and drag that in there. Uh, from there, it's going to prompt us to select a form. Let's select the form we have. And you can see we have our name, email, subject, and message. Let's go ahead and change this up a bit to look a little bit better. So we have the field size, which if you look at this gray area, those are the fields. We can change those from small, medium, extra large, all of the above. Go ahead and stick with small. We have the field padding. So inside of the field right here, you can see there's a little bit of space. This field padding, if we go ahead and remove that, you can see that there's no longer any padding. There's no longer any padding right here. So we can go ahead and adjust that separately. So we can have certain paddings on the top and bottom. And then we can also adjust more or less on the left and right, depending on how you want your form to look. Let's see, from there, we can go ahead and choose the field background color. Um, there's a few different options you can do here. You can keep a color, or you can actually make this transparent if you wanted to do the more minimalist, border-only bottom uh, feel. So let's go ahead and cover that. Uh, the field background color, we have this. We can change this to a darker gray. And then we have this here. And we can also make this transparent. So we have this transparent and we only have the borders. We have the label color. So the your name, your email, subject, and your message are all labels. So we can go ahead and change those to be whatever we want to match the branding of the website. From there, we have the input text and placeholder image. So this input text right here, and if you have any placeholders, would be changed through this color right here. So we can do that. So you can have a, a dark field background color if you would like. And then for the placeholder or the actual text, you can make this a white color. So if you're going to have like a dark theme for your website, you can go ahead and add those different options. Uh, we have a border color, so let's go ahead and make this transparent and we'll show you how to work the border. So we have the border style. We have solid, double, dashed, and dotted. Uh, those are pretty self-explanatory. You can see the dotted goes ahead and makes all of them have dots. You can go double, so you have two lines dashed, things of that nature. Let's stick with solid. For the border width, you see that we have a complete rectangle. All of the sides have borders. This is because we have one on each. We can bump this up to a great thickness, and then from there we can actually see the different see the different borders that are available. And then we can also make this so that they're all zero, except for the bottom, where we can make this two pixels on the bottom. So that way it gives it kind of that minimal feel that we can just have those fields if you're doing a very material website. The border active color. So right now if we go to here and we start typing, we can go ahead and have all of that. Let's go ahead and change the text color real quick. Um, so you have all of this here. And then if we can make the border active color so it's an active um, color whenever we're in it, people will know exactly what section they're on when they're typing. If you have more of a invisible fields kind of thing going on. Rounded corners, let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. So from here we have the two. And if we do a rounded corners, it makes them more of a circular and oval shape. And you can go ahead and increase and decrease those as you wish. So you can see that we're getting uh, less and less round corners on our 
big box and then from there we can go ahead and just do slight round corners or massive round corners. Field alignment we can do left center right. So for the for the um for the labels we can go ahead and add those. So if you have a very centered site, everything's directed towards the middle, you can go ahead and center those. And then you can always do left or right align. We have radio and checkbox styles. So from there, we can override the current style and we have all of those different options here. Let's go ahead and show you. So from there, we have the option to override the current style or not. So right now, this is what it looks like natively. We can override the current style. We can make the, uh, the checkbox is larger. We can make the actual box background a different color. The selected, so you see the check mark, we can go ahead and make that white. The label color, option one, two, and three, we can go ahead and make those a different color as well. And then we have borders. You can't see the borders right now, but let's go ahead and make those more prominent. And up those a little bit. So you can see that we have a, a black border around these checkbox areas. So we have all of those different options, and this applies to the radio and the checkbox, not just the checkbox only. And we can also make these circles if we want them to be circles. From there. The submit button. So we have ways to stylize this. We have left, center, right, and we have it justified so it goes across the entire width of the contact form, uh, no matter how big the contact form is. Uh, I'm always a fan of doing the full width because it just looks more clean and put together. But there is an alternative that I do like as well, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, so from the button size, you can change those to be small, medium, large. You can go ahead and do that. And the way that I was talking about earlier was the padding. So what I like to do is change this to a bigger padding on the sides so that it's not justified all the way across but it has more padding so that it's more prominent than what it used to look like. From there, we have the normal and hover state for the button. So right now it's a, uh, a blue background and we can go ahead and change that by either clicking the classic or we can do a gradient. If we do a gradient, we can choose two different colors and have those right there. We can go ahead and change that. We can also choose color. So we can have multiple colors that we can choose from whatever you, your website brand is, or you can actually do an image background. So we can go ahead and make uh, these mountains, the background for this. And then um, what it does, we'll go ahead and center this so that we can see this. Let's do no repeat. Uh, I'm gonna cover this and then no border. So we have a mountain background right there that we can choose from. We have our text here that we can change the color of. And then we also have the border radius. So right now it's a slight border radius because it's a little bit curved here. So we can make this a complete oval or we can do no border radius at all. So it's completely square edges. And of course we have our box shadow. So our box shadow allows us to go ahead and add this little bit of shading underneath of it. So we can go ahead and control the horizontal and the vertical of the box shadow. The success and error message, we have these options. So we can do the position message, it'll be default, or you can do the bottom right side of the field. So it'll be down here on the right hand side. We also have the highlight borders. So everything for the uh, success and error message. So this is also field validation. So this is saying, you need to fill out this form because you forgot you forgot to fill out this field and it's required. So you can highlight the borders of the field with a certain color, and then you can also turn the color message a different color if you want. It's a little bit of a harsh red, so I usually like to go with a more subtle red, something along the lines of this, just so it kind of fits in with the with the design a little bit. You also have the same for the success and error validation. So the success color, all of this is default to green, and then the error messages are default to red, and those appear up here at the top when the form is submitted uh, either successfully or in error.
And then we also have a helpful, helpful information section where we can do uh, display input fields in a column. And then if you're unable to see the checkbox, just go ahead and, and read these documents if you are having either one of these issues. Under the style section, we have the ways to space out the fields and we also have some topography settings. So the between the label and the input, so right here is where the spacing is going to occur. If we go ahead and increase that, we can see that this space right here is staying the same, but this space right here is decreasing. So we have those options there. Then between the fields, so between this input and this label is where the space is going to increase if you want to do something like that. Topography, so we have the form label topography, the input text and placeholder button, and the radio button and checkbox. So we have the form label, which is the your name. We can make those different sizes. Um, and then we can go ahead and change the transformation so we can make them all uppercase, things of that nature. Now you notice how it's doing these options as well. And that's going to be underneath of the radio button and the checkbox. And we're going to get to that in just a sec. So we have the first name field here. So let's go ahead for the input text and placeholder. Let's go ahead and change this to a different font. And we're going to go ahead and increase the size of that. So we have that. So let's go ahead and change that a little bit. You can see how it gets bigger and smaller here. Then we also have the button. So right here, we can change the topography of that. Change up the size of the button. Send. We can change the weight. We can change the transformation, so uppercase. So we have all of those different options. And then for the radio button and checkbox, we have the option to make those uh, just a little bit smaller so they're not so in your face. And that way we can control them separately than the labels for the other fields because it's such a specific thing that you want to control. It's great, it's great to have that granular control over top of over uh, the uh, radio buttons and the checkbox. So right now we have a pretty great looking field let's go ahead and put this into action let's go ahead and add a template and we're going to go ahead and use one of the one of the great blocks and pages that elementor allows us to have so we're going to go ahead and search for contact let's go ahead and input this here and this way we can show you what it looks like in action so let's go ahead and get rid of this form and we're going to input our own so let's select it here. We have these different options here. So we can go ahead and make these fields a different design. So let's go ahead and do this. And then we want our border size to be two. We have the border bottom right there. So we have that looking great. Let's change a little bit about the radio checkbox. We have those. We want the background color to be a little bit something different. Make that a little bit lighter here. So we have all of these different options that we can choose from and make it look really great. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and match this a little bit. So we're already looking great and it's great to just input these into your site, style it however you want, and then you're automatically great. You're automatically good to go. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have not done so yet, go ahead and subscribe to us and click the like button and comment below if you have any questions. And we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.